The largest volcano ever just cracked open the Earth. When we talk about volcanoes, one thing that instantly comes to mind is an eruption. These volcanoes create a tear in the Earth's crust, allowing hot lava, gases, and volcanic ash to escape from below the Earth's surface. While an eruption is certainly expected or thought of in the presence of a volcano, it is undeniable that volcanoes are one of the most destructive forces on Earth. There are four different types of volcanoes which include the following – stratovolcanoes, calderas, shield volcanoes, and midwater ridges. No matter the appearance of a volcano, they have all helped shape the Earth into the way it is today, not to mention the volcanic materials that form some of the most fertile soils on Earth. On average, there are roughly over 50 volcanoes that erupt on a yearly basis. Eruptions occur more frequently in places where tectonic plates meet, but these volcanic eruptions are simply unable to compare to an explosion from a supervolcano. Today, there are over 1,500 active volcanoes in the world, but only about 20 known supervolcanoes. And while these supervolcanoes are much smaller in number, the explosions that they cause are extremely volatile and boast a magnitude of 8 on the Volcanic Explosivity Index, with 8 being the highest number on the scale. One of these supervolcanoes is the Yellowstone Caldera, which is situated in Yellowstone National Park in the western United States. Just recently, Yellowstone National Park officials released an announcement on a catastrophic event that's about to happen. So, what exactly is going on in Yellowstone Park? And should we be concerned about the impending disaster that's bound to happen? Sit tight and keep your eyes peeled, because today we'll be talking about how the largest volcano ever will crack the Earth open. With almost 4 million annual visitors, it is no surprise that Yellowstone is well recognized. The park is known for its wildlife and its many geothermal features, attracting numerous visitors each year and even prompting those who visited before to keep coming back just to witness the park's mystical features over and over again, making the park one of the most famous tourist spots in the world. Yellowstone's presence came to be known at least 11,000 years ago when Native Americans began to fish and hunt in the region. Scientists were able to uncover this information by studying archaeological deposits from a site near the shore of Yellowstone Lake. However, the first American to set foot in Yellowstone is John Coulter, who was a member of the Lewis and Clark expedition. During the winter of 1807-1808, Coulter passed through an area of what later became Yellowstone Park. Coulter heavily observed one geothermal area in the northeastern section of Yellowstone and described the area as a place of fire and brimstone. Most people were quick to dismiss Coulter's words and passed his knowledge of Yellowstone as delirium, leading the supposedly supernatural place to be nicknamed Coulter's Hell. Though it may have been easy to not believe in such a unique place in the past, it was simply because people could not fathom that such a place existed. For instance, Yellowstone National Park has many hydrothermal features, with over half of these features in the world being in Yellowstone. These hydrothermal features include mud pots, hot springs, fumaroles, travertine terraces, and the most well-known of them all, the geysers. Yellowstone National Park is situated in the western United States and was established by the 42nd U.S. Congress in March of 1872. Yellowstone was the first national park in the United States and is also widely held to be the first national park in the world. Even though the park's official address is tied to the state of Wyoming, the park expands throughout Idaho and Montana. In fact, the park is so big that it spans an impressive area of over 3,468 square miles. Overall, Yellowstone has a uniquely rich and diverse landscape that has been generous for thousands of years. An example of this generosity is its production of a massive outcrop of volcanic rock known as obsidian. Located just between the path of Norris Giza Basin and Mammoth Hot Springs lies the Obsidian Cliff. The Obsidian Cliff is a very important place for ancient inhabitants, and the cliff also served as an important source of high-quality obsidian for North America. Obsidian is an igneous rock, occurring as a natural volcanic glass that is formed when the lava that is extruded from a volcano cools rapidly, with minimal to no crystal growth. This black glass can be honed to an exceptionally thin edge, proving to be ten times sharper than a razor blade. Another thing to be wary of when visiting Yellowstone Park is the bison. 
Bison are distantly related to the Asian water buffalo and African buffalo. With the park having large areas of grass prairies and alpine meadows, it conveniently provides a nearly perfect environment for the American bison who live in prairies and plains. In addition, the park may be the only place in the United States where free-ranging bison never cease to exist, and they've continued to exist in the wild without ever being introduced. So, the next time you happen to share a road with not only other visitors but bison as well, Feel free to feast your eyes upon these massive gems of the wild. Coexisting with Bison and Yellowstone National Park are approximately 300 species of birds, 16 types of fish, and roughly 67 species of mammals. As a matter of fact, did you know that Yellowstone has the largest number of mammalian species in the US? These mammals include but are not limited to grizzly bears, wolves, lynx foxes, moose, and elk. Although you may find yourself wanting to get a hold of these majestic creatures, the park strictly implements its wildlife safety guidelines in order to ensure the safety of civilians. The guidelines state that you must stay at least 100 yards away from wolves and bears and 25 yards for other large animals. However, there is something far more unsafe in Yellowstone Park than bears and wolves, and you can't even escape it when it comes after you. These perilous things are volcanoes. Yellowstone comprises canyons, mountain ranges, rivers, and lakes. One of these lakes, specifically Yellowstone Lake, is recognized as one of the largest high-elevation lakes in North America and is centered over the Yellowstone Caldera, which is the largest supervolcano on the continent, only rivaled by the Lake Toba Caldera on Sumatra. Although Yellowstone may mesmerize any other person, don't let its beauty fool you. Yellowstone is a volcanic region, and underneath it lurks a huge reservoir of hot magma that runs over five miles deep. While volcanism in Yellowstone often happens, the calderas in this region are created by large eruptions that took place millions of years ago. A caldera is a large depression on the surface of the Earth that is formed when a volcano erupts and collapses. The calderas in Yellowstone lie over the Yellowstone hotspot under the Yellowstone Plateau. It is important to note that the Yellowstone hotspot has generated numerous eruptions and countless floods of basaltic lava over the course of roughly 16.5 million years. And at least a dozen of these eruptions were classified as super eruptions because they were so violent and massive. For the past 2.1 million years, three extremely volatile eruptions have occurred in Yellowstone. The most recent occurred 640,000 years ago, which is responsible for shaping the current Yellowstone caldera today. The explosion released more than 240 cubic miles of ash, rock, and pyroclastic materials. Scientists pointed out that this eruption was more than 1,000 times larger than the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens, producing a caldera of nearly 1 kilometer deep and 45 by 28 miles in area. The second eruption was a much smaller explosion of volcanic material occurring 1.3 million years ago and was responsible for forming the Henry's Fork Caldera and depositing the Mesa Falls Tuff. The most violent eruption the Yellowstone had was its first eruption, which occurred 2.1 million years ago. The explosion covered 5,790 square miles and ejected over 6,000 times the volumes of material spewed than the most recent Yellowstone eruption. The three super eruptions had a recurrence interval of about 600,000 to 800,000 years and released vast amounts of ash that covered much of central North America. The number of volcanic materials falling many hundreds of miles away caused a significant impact on the world's weather patterns and led to the extinction of some species. Recently, an upward movement of the Yellowstone hotspot has fascinated scientists, yet alarmed some people seeing that the movement of the Yellowstone caldera floor was more than three times greater than ever observed since the measurements began in 1923. Between the years 2004 and 2008, the caldera moved almost 75 millimeters. However, later research showed that the caldera went into an episode of sinking or subsidence. The largest vertical movement of the caldera was recorded at the White Lake GPS station inside the caldera's rim. Here, the total lift in 2010 measured up to 27 centimeters. 
Today, more liquid magma silently lurks underneath the Yellowstone supervolcano. Fortunately, researchers state that the amount of magma is nowhere near enough to cause a super eruption anytime soon. So, what will happen if Yellowstone will erupt for the fourth time? If another large, violent eruption were to occur in Yellowstone, it would have regional effects such as falling ash and global climate changes that may last for years or even decades. The places closest to Yellowstone would be heavily affected by pyroclastic flows, while further places would suffer the impact of falling ash. In short, the massive explosion would be experienced worldwide. Now, you may find yourself thinking, why should I be afraid of falling ash? The fact is, regular ash is nowhere near as dangerous as volcanic ash. Volcanic ash consists of abrasive particles such as fragments of rock, mineral crystals, and volcanic glass. These harmful particles are capable of scratching the surface of the skin and eyes, causing inflammation. In the worst-case scenario, if the ash is inhaled, the particles will damage the lungs, suffocating the person to death. Although the explosion of the Yellowstone supervolcano may not occur in our lifetime, it is incredibly terrifying to imagine the significant amount of lives it will take and the destruction it will cause. Aside from the fact that each volcano is unique, let alone supervolcanoes, we're nowhere near sure that Yellowstone will not erupt in the near future, since volcanic systems are unpredictable and may change all the time. But what do you think? Will Yellowstone erupt way sooner than we expect? And will we be able to survive the super eruption when it happens? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below.